using the, the set model, using a variety of cubes, tiles, marbles, anything that can be made into a set can represent, represent a fraction model. And then as, as students are ready, using that linear model, the linear model of uh, here's a length, whether it be a ruler, and we could come back to a ruler model of, of the number line, so that students get the idea that there are many different representations. And then making the connection between and among, among the models. So students get to the, the point where they see many different ways of see, looking at a fraction. And, and lastly, I think that the connection to kindergarten and second grade, moving into third and uh, fifth grade, uh, problem solving. Mm -hmm. here's, a, here's a fraction. Give me a problem that, that could represent this fraction. Um, uh, find a story. Give me a story that represents one fourth times. You know. So finding that way of helping students to understand that this is real life. This can be related to real life and their real experiences. Mm -hmm. I think those are the, the building blocks that will help students <coughs> understanding at, at the later grades. Karen or Skip, K2. Well, I'm, I'm just encouraged by the fact that essentially half the audience felt like this, this notion about conceptual understanding is, is uh, really important, which is, I think, how we began the show. Mm -hmm. so, so things, activities that teachers would use to give kids an opportunity to talk about these things, whether they're fractions as A over B or whether they're, they're looking at fractions as decimals or what's it mean that you're drinking 2% milk or that your coach wants you to perform at 110% level. I always wondered about that myself. <laughs> um, you know, those kinds of conversations about using um, these rational numbers are things that, that ought to occur more frequently. And it's, again, this is, a, this is not a new element of our curriculum, but I think that, and it's not just the National Mathematics Advisory Panel that is, that is calling some attention uh, to this. So it's, it's time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Karen, anything about K2? The most, one of the most important things in K2 is the whole number foundation that's laid also, because as some of the questions that came in talked about basic facts, and mm -hmm. they talked about being able to mm -hmm. do whole number computation and knowing all of the things that you need to do to be able to do fraction computation that relies on that whole number basis. Developing that very strongly in K2 yeah. to sets kids up for real success. Mm -hmm. We have time for one last question, and I want to uh, jump to uh, this one came to us from Hodgton, Maine. Um, what are the best strategies for developing number sense in children with special needs? I throw it out, throw it to the panel. Well, I, I, first of all, I think that um, special needs children um, are entitled to as much opportunity as any child in any classroom in this country, and that includes the mathematics. Should special education students uh, be accountable for their knowledge of working with fractions and decimals and percent leading to ratio and proportion? Absolutely. And I suspect that a lot of, a lot of the responses to the questions today from Karen and, and Bertram are just as viable for that child or those children as anything we've said. You know, special education children may need more time. Special education children may need support in terms of particular uh, use of representations more than some other children or what have you, but th this is, this is really important mathematics for everyone in our schools. And if I hear you correctly, Skip, what you're saying is that best practices are best practices yeah. are best practices. I, I sure, sure go along with that. I, 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 that's correct. <laughs> Karen, how about uh, special needs children and, and um, the, your work, your professional development I, work, I guess, within, within the county? Can you say a little bit about that? In Montgomery County, Maryland, one of the things that we look at is the co-teaching model, so including special needs students in the classroom with students that are in just the general education curriculum so that they have access to the same quality of instruction and quality of curriculum and the same expectations. It may take them additional time or support. It may mean a modification of materials, but the end goal, as Skip says, is, and as Bert said, best practices for general education children are best practices for special ed. Well, we really could continue on this all day, but unfortunately our time on set is up. Now there were many questions that were asked that we did not get to, and frankly there was a lot of great videotape material that we gathered that we could not get to either. For that reason, we will keep you posted on how we will work to get more questions answered and make other materials available on our website. 
Before we wrap up, please take a short survey of today's event. To help us better meet your needs, you'll find a link to that survey at the bottom of the webcast launch page. I want to thank our panel today, Skip Fennell from McDaniel College, Karen Roberts from, Mon uh, from Maryland's Montgomery County Public Schools, and Bertram Jennerlet from Piney Branch Elementary School in Tacoma Park, Maryland. And a very special thanks to UGA's Denise Mewborn and Patty Huberty, and UCAL Berkeley's Wu, all of whom helped immensely with our taped video segments. And speaking of video, we want to shout out a big thanks to New Media Mill here in DC, our webcast partner, and the studios at the National Geographic Society building where this webcast originated. For the Center for Comprehensive School Reform and Improvement and Learning Point Associates, thank you very much for joining us.